Hey, I'm Jade Keogh. And hello from me too, I'm Grace Seeley. We both play for the Millwall Lionesses and are sponsored by the No One Likes Us talking team. Why not sponsor one of our teammates just like they do? To find out how, just email kwebster at millwallcommunity.org.uk. I'll say that again. kwebster at millwallcommunity.org.uk. In your email, say who you want to sponsor and we'll get back to you with the sponsorship details and what to do next. This is all you have to do and it will help us to get back to where we belong. Thank you, guys. Now, enjoy our Mirwall fan show from No One Likes Us to Talking Team. Come on, Mirwall. Warren here and you've joined us for the weekly Our Millwall Fan Show with the Millwall No One Likes Us Talking team which is broadcast every Friday evening. Enjoy! Welcome to the 2022-23 series of Millwall No One Likes Us Talking to Our Millwall Fan Show. I'm your host Damon Barclay and with me I have the No One Likes Us Talking team either Bethany Warren, Ted Robinson and Jeff Burnage. Not everybody likes them, but they don't care. Well, we were at the Den on a very, very cold afternoon last Saturday where we faced, well, almost bottom of the table, Wigan. Uh, 1-1. What do you reckon, Ted? Uh, I might be one of the only Millwall fans that actually walked out of that stadium quite happy that we got a point because my memories of Wigan are not great. We always seem to struggle against them. We very rarely seem to beat them. And uh, on, on Saturday, it was just that, you know, typical Millwall thing. We're pushing for a playoff spot and we're going to fight to get their way out of relegation. The sort of game that everyone turns up expecting to be nice and easy. And lo and behold, it's complete opposite. We can actually haven't got a bad away record this season, to be quite honest. If you look at the uh, most of their points, they've got from away from home. So I had a feeling it was going to be a tough, tough day for, for one reason or another, um, and I knew it was going to be a bit of a battle. Uh, and I just felt if we could have got ourselves in front, we may well have pushed on to have to have won. Um, but uh, overall, it was a funny sort of game in the respect that it got a bit disappointing in the second half. Even though you know we had a couple of decent chances when yeah. Billy Mitchell whipped one straight at the keeper when either side it was a goal. You know um, there was little incidents like that that didn't quite come off. Um, and let's face it, they had the rubber the ball in the sense for their goal. Without a doubt, it just bounced back to him. Poor old George Long was still diving for the first one by the time the ball <laughs> went back the net. Yeah. But, uh, you know, even no no slight on George, he just he, he was already gone. For it, but it just happened to rebound straight straight back to uh, Will Keane, and uh, you know that that all of a sudden from there it was going to be difficult for us. But thankfully we we replied pretty well. I I, I, I still think you know in in years gone by we would have come out of that stadium having lost one nil. So to, to I say to have a one all draw out of the game in the finish, I, I wasn't as disappointed as I thought I was going to be. Let's no, put that way. no. Uh, and, um, it maybe wasn't the greatest performance, but then, you know, we're going to a better side than people give them credit for, I think. And it, it was just one of them midwinter games that it just felt like it was going to peter out to a draw. Yeah. Jeff, what did you think? Some fair comments from Ted there. Uh, it was a disappointing second half because having equalised, I think we were entitled to expect Millwall to go for it and clinch the win. But... Um, uh, the best, the highlight of the game for me was the quality of our equaliser. A great ball in, uh, brilliantly chested down by um, by Bradshaw and volleyed in by Zian Fleming. It, it was a really good goal. Um, but the championship, we all know what it's like. Everyone can beat anybody. Uh, and that was Wigan's day. New manager. They got a one goal lead and they're up. Let's put it behind us. It, it wasn't great, but... Uh, Okay, Bethany. Yeah, I feel the same as Ted, really. It was good to get a point, to be honest. Um, I was working on Saturday, so I was on my lunch break and then saw that we conceded. So I was like, oh, I'm coming off my lunch break. I'm going on the shop floor. Just sort of came off in a mood. Then um, I thought, <laughs> oh, actually, no, I, I might as well have a sit down. 
And then by the time I'd sat down, I just I opened my phone and I'd seen that we'd scored as well. I was like, for goodness sake, I missed it all. Um, but yeah, I didn't really see too much. I've not really had a chance to catch up on the game, but I'm glad we got a point. We didn't lose, so I'll take it. Yeah, let's go from there. I was I was rather disappointed with um, Danny McNamara. I think he should have scored instead of curving the ball away from the uh, the goal. And the the woman that was sitting next to me, who was no relation of mine, she was terribly uh, disappointed with old Longy when he she said he's dived in one way and the ball's gone the other. What's the matter with him? And I said, oh, <laughs> it, it, well, difficult, I suppose. Um, I hope she watched the uh, highlights to see what actually happened. But um, yeah, it was um, it was a cold afternoon, a real cold afternoon that was that was made even more enjoyable by the fact that um, South Bermondsey Station was closed and uh, it was a, a real pain in the backside. Seems to be happening so frequently now. Um, it's just mad. But there you go. One thing surprised me, Eamon, was uh, uh, that the guy who played on the right for uh, Wigan was roasting. Uh, he was. Murray Wallace. And I, I mean, I'm a big Murray Wallace fan. I really yeah. am. But, uh, I, I was saying, and most people around me were saying, but why, why on earth is he not bringing Scott Malone on? You know, yeah. apart from anything else about you know the defending side of it, because the bloke was. We all sort of thought that if Scott Malone come on, he gives a bit more going forward. Bear in mind, he is one of oh, if he isn't our top assist player uh, this season. If you know what I mean, with the amount of assists that mm. Scott Malone's got. I just thought if Scott Malone had come on and started getting forward, it would have dragged that bloke back, back and stopped him yeah. from being... Because that was where I could see Wigan nicking. Not that they really threatened too much to score, but, um, you know, he, he, he certainly had the beating of Murray on the day. Mm. And uh, I was a little surprised that, that Gary didn't Gary Rowett didn't sort of choose to do that because I thought it would have been an attacking move as well with Scott yeah. Malone. Well, he'll have had his reasons, I'm no doubt. Anyway, I'm going to hand uh, over to Bethany now. Before we hear from Debbie Julians, it's the anniversary of her dad, Lenny Julians' death on the 17th of December. Debbie says, Here's to those lion hearts talking football in heaven. He was too alive to leave us. The fans were always in his heart. We say, remembering a Millwall legend, Len Julians, too good to be forgotten. Yeah, and I think we all would uh, agree with that. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, a big hero of mine. Yeah. We'll take a break there and hear about our sponsor, GNM Motors. Our Millwall Fan Show is sponsored by family business GNM Motors of Gravesend and Mepham in Kent. They are Millwall fans too. They've been Honda dealers for over 50 years. At GNM Motors Gravesend, you can purchase a new Honda. At both Gravesend and Mepham, they have a combined range of over 150 quality used cars and ex-demonstrators to suit all budgets and lifestyles. They also offer a comprehensive range of repair and maintenance services to ensure your vehicle stays reliable, safe and retains a higher value with trust. GNM Motors, Gravesend and Mepham are dear friends of the Julians family. From Lenny to Debbie and also our Millwall fan show. I'm your host, Eamon Barclay, and with me I have the no one likes his talking team either, Bethany Warren, Ted Robinson and Jeff Burnage. Our first guest is a young man who has hit the media highs with his interview with Rob Rinder and Susanna Reid. He's a young Millwall football club fan. Well, of course he would be if he's on here. It's Lucas Daly, and he won ITV's Good Morning Britain's Young Loneliness Award. The seven-year-old, yeah, you did, the seven-year-old fan received the award for his book, Bone Man, inspired by Dav Pikey's Dog Man series. Dav Pilkey. Dav Pilkey, is it? Oh, you're right. I can't read properly. Thank you. (laughs) After writing the book, he published it with the help of his mum and sold it to raise money for the Greenwich and Bexley Community Hospice. 
where his late granddad spent his last days. Anyhow, let's say no more and welcome the one and only Lucas Daly and Mum Rhea. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello Lucas. Hello, Rhea. Hello, Lucas. Hello, Hello how Rhea. are you? They're, they're, I'm good. I'm very yeah. good. Good to hear, good to speak to you both. That's Thank Jeff. They'll introduce themselves proper when they uh, they ask a question. Anyhow, look, Lucas, great to have you on the show. Before I hand you over to the panel, what did you think you were doing when you went to the television studios last week? I thought I was having a studio tour. But really? No, I um, um, and uh, did someone mislead you then? Did someone tell you you were just having a studio tour? And um, my mum, yeah. Oh, well, oh. there you go. We were in the final five, wasn't you? Yeah. And they said that we were going along, they were going to show the little video and hopefully advertise it so that you would get nominated to win. Oh. We just thought you were in the final. We didn't, have, we, didn't, we didn't know that you were actually there because you had won it. Well, you did, and that was fantastic to see. Lovely That's- surprise, wasn't it? I think Ted's got a, a question yep. for you now. Hello, Lucas. Um, Hello. Hi, Hiya. Hiya. Hiya, Ria. Um, Greenwich and Bexley Hospice is, is very dear to my heart as it goes because I've had some of my family in there. I was just saying to Aim before we come on, I was only there last week, funny enough. But it was a brilliant idea you had to raise money for the hospice through your books in memory of your granddad. How did you go about making the Bone Man books? Well, one night in my bedroom, I made a story, number one. The next night, I made story number two in my bedroom. Wow. Just like that? Uh, and at a time, I just finished reading Dove Pilkey books. This gave me an idea to write my own book. Oh. And I just found you in your bedroom one day, just writing books. <laughs> You must be very proud, Mum, because we're very proud of him. So you must be extremely. absolutely, extremely proud, yeah, to have a budding author on your hands at the age of seven. That's remarkable. But uh, well, yeah, at the time of writing these books, it was you're six. Yeah, you're six. Was, oh, God, I do you an injustice, Lucas. I'm sorry about just, that. He was only six um, last or Sunday before last, and oh, he wrote right. his first book this time last year. Just oh, as we oh, broke right. up for the summer holidays last year, he that's when he started writing so. my, my, my god i should read i should start all over again i don't do your, <laughs> so yeah the first the first book he was actually only six and four or five weeks old he sounds yeah. like a very intelligent young man to me and <laughs> what the other thing i've got to say lucas is what was it like sitting next to Susanna reed well um it was um quite surprising um because um, sometimes she goes near and sometimes she doesn't, but normally she does. So I was um, a bit surprised um, to have her sitting next to me. Mm. Oh. We were up, wasn't we, to see what different people go on the show? Because yeah. we knew we were going up for a studio tour. We were trying to work out who you were going to meet, wasn't we? Yeah. But, oh. I met, um, but eventually it was... It was... Who was it? Rob. Yeah, Rob. Um, Rob and Susan. Um, yes, yeah, Susan. Yeah, Rob. Rob gave you the prize, didn't he? Did he give you the award? Was it Rob? Yeah, it was. And the, the surprised look on your face, Lucas, has stayed with me ever since that moment because uh, <laughs> you was absolutely stunned, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you were a bit lost for words, wasn't you? you got taken back a bit, didn't you? I think Mum was just a, a surprise as well, wasn't you, Ria? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but it was about him. I wanted it all to be about him. Of course, um, of course. So, yeah, I kind of kept quiet, didn't I, and allowed you to talk. Does Mum usually keep quiet and allow you to talk, <laughs> Lucas? Uh, sometimes. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi Lucas, it's Bethany here. I saw Billy Mitchell make a surprise video link appearance on Good Morning Britain to congratulate you on behalf of Millwall Football Club for what you've done. What was that like? It was amazing seeing talk to him. 
live in front of you naked. You're such a surprise. I was very kind of him to take his time training to talk to me. Well, that's that's wonderful that he did. Who chose Billy Mitchell to talk to you? My favourite football player at Millwall. And and you saw him afterwards as well, didn't you? When I came home, um, I asked my mum if I could um, go um, to his house. My mum let me. So I went up to his house and took a few pictures with my toy phone. That's wonderful. Jeff's going to talk to you now. Hi, Lucas. It's Jeff here. Uh, do you know, I think I can remember meeting you in the uh, executive lounge at Millwall one, one time, Lucas. Don't suppose you can remember that yourself. But I, it made a big impression on me. So it's a great to talk to you now. How did you actually feel when Rob Rinder presented you with the award when you thought you were just a finalist? Very special. I was so surprised. I thought I was a finalist. I had no idea I'd in fact not won. Well, I've got three-year-old grandchildren, and I think they like the Bone Man books. So I'm going to get them a couple of the Bone Man books to read to them, because I enjoy reading to them. I just think it's amazing what you've done. I'm so proud of you, and you've made Millwall proud of you, and you've made Millwall look good. So good thing all round. Well done. Going to have to get him some books, aren't we? Yeah. I, yes, I don't please. think that's for his grandchildren. That's for Jeff, really. Are they a bit frightening? No. Oh, I saw right. well. Mm. Nope. well, I'll have. Mm. I'll have, I need four books, Lucas, because Mark, I've got four grandchildren. So, I, um, you tell me where I've got to send the money to, and. Um, Greenwich and Bexley Hospice. Oh, I know that. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll, yes. Oh, you can send there. it to us and we'll give it to you, Emma. But we need to order the books first. Yeah, we'll order them for you. Oh, right, you if, can... if we do them in a, in, in a bulk thing through no one likes us talking, I'll pay for them all. So if, uh, if you can do that with Eamon, if you can organise that, then I'm more than happy to... Uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can work something out. Um, yeah. yeah, we need to get so many to bring the cost in down. Yeah. Um, if we yeah. can get enough, then it, it works out a lot better because obviously Amazon take a large chunk of of the money if it's bought bought by that. Uh-huh. Well so, I'm gonna want a few I'm gonna want a few as well, Ria and Lucas. I'm definitely gonna want a few. So um yeah, uh, organise that with Eamon and we'll send send the money. Ted's gonna do it as well. Yep, so, definitely. and Eamon, you'll probably do it. And the whole of the No One Likes Us talking team will want to be in on this one, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, I'll have a look because I think when we order it with my printer, well, one book with postage works at £16.50, which is quite a lot. But then as soon as you get up to about 20 books, it works out £2 a book, which is a lot cheaper. Mm. Well, yeah, but we're, we'll pay the game rate for the right reasons. Yeah, and then obviously, but with Amazon... Oh, no, Amazon yeah. Take, uh, Amazon, we only get one pound off of Amazon. Goodness. If that makes sense, because yes. they take the producing cost and then they take a 70% profit and we only get 30%, which leaves us with a pound. Mm. So the more we can do in-house and get it at two pound, then we're donating four pound for every book rather than just the one pound every book. That makes sense for us. But the listeners would want to obtain copies. But then once again, we have to get to so many orders before That's I right. the order. And if we don't hit that, then... Um, it's twice. <laughs> and you have to order about 20, but all of the same book, not spread across the whole, the whole series. Uh, yeah. So the first book's got three stories in. The second book's got four stories in. Yeah. Um, and it's slightly bigger. So the second book cost me around £3 after I've ordered 20. The first book's £2 after the 20. Um, on Amazon, the first book, they take £2.05, pence, then 70%. And the second book, they take £3.80 yeah. and then 70%. It's for that hospice, so we'll, we'll pay whatever it takes. I want some of these books. We have literally got rid of about 160 of the first books. I think I've only got about three left. That's doing well. Uh, doing yes. Well. And then the second book we've sent. And you, and, and you, saw, you sent, sent something out to the United States as well? 
Um, no, on Amazon, someone from the States oh, has, did they? has ordered one on Amazon. So, yeah, when you go and into... Spanish boy. That's it, and girl. Spain. Someone from Spain's ordered it. So as soon as you go into your account, you can see how many books have been sold yeah. and in what continent they were sold or what country oh. they were sold in. Well, Lucas, you're going global, and that's great. One in the US, one in Spain, and 300 and something in here in the UK. Well, let's get that number up. Eamon, is there any any value in us, sort of any listeners, if they want uh, any books to come through us so to make the num- the bulk the numbers up? They like can do that. that. Um, we'll promote that as an ongoing thing on our um, yeah. website, on our Facebook site, and on our Twitter site. So... We'll do that, and then we can, as they build, we'll get the numbers in and um, make that happen with you, Ria. Yeah? Yeah, Yeah, well, we can always order a number, and then it's first come, first serve, I'm afraid. That's all right. Well, we might might ourselves buy a bulk of you. I'd like that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can get it up to 500. That's a good... It would be really good. Yeah, Yeah. we've got got another one coming out soon, haven't we? It's finished. Oh, Oh. He's finished his Where Is Bone Man. Good. Well, so okay. we're just working out on when to put that out. Lovely. Um, it's up, ready just to click on the button to get it up. Good. Um, and then you've got to finish your Bone Man's feelings, haven't you? And then mm-hmm. hopefully we'll get on to the next books back onto the Bone Man series. You'll be out yeah. there signing copies before long, Lucas. Yeah. It'd be a superstar. And yeah, Lucas... Lovely to speak with you. We'll talk again. Right, say bye. I think he's run off to the toilet. Sorry. That's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's what boys do. Working with children, I mean, that is Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, you can't <laughs> beat it. Thanks, Ria. You take care. You too. All right. Bye now. Bye, bye. now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. bye. Well, that was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> Lucas and Ria. Hey, we couldn't complain about that at all. Okay, we'll take a break there and listen to Debbie Julians and Harvey Brown talk about the Lions Food Hub. Let's hear from Harvey Brown. Have you heard of the Lions Food Hub? That new all lioness Kelly Webster is involved. Don't forget to help the Lions Food Hub if you can. Thank you. As Harvey said, they need your support. If you can help, and you can make a one-off or a regular monetary donation at Banquet, that is B-A-N-K-U-E-T. You will find them online. Insert www.banquet.co.uk forward slash Lions Food Hub into your browser. I'll say that again. www.banquet.co.uk co.uk forward slash Lions Food Hub and the Lions Food Hub is all one word. On match days you can make food and toiletry donations at the Lions Food Hub which is opposite the 1885 bar at the Cold Low Lane end of the ground. Alternatively you can also contact the team via the Lions Food Hub Twitter or Facebook sites. The Lions Food Hub you can't beat that. They do need your help. Things are getting worse. If you can be so kind, you can certainly help those people that are at greater risk. That brings me to say, I would like us to think about a friend of the show, Jackie Knight's father, Ian Gomez, who has undergone two operations today. You may remember him playing Let Them Come when he was a resident pianist at the Ritz. Let's hear that. Cover well, Ian. Tonight, we welcome a regular voice on the show 
who on this occasion joins us in the studio. I'll say no more. It's Paul Lodin, the Millwall Romans and Pride Chairman. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. It's nice to be here. Well, it's, it's delightful to have you uh, live, as they say. We we always hear your uh, your thoughts each week, so that's good. I'm going to hand you over to the panel now. Hi, Paul. It's Bethany here. It is great to talk to you in person. Um, many thanks for the reports that you do for us and our listeners. Has it been easy making the transition to general manager and then the chairman from Millwall Romans captain while still playing? Hi, uh, hi, Beth. Nice to um, nice to speak to you. Um, yeah, it's been a it's been a bit of a strange one. I I, I got to a point where there was so much going on outside um, running the first team that uh, I just could, didn't have time to actually concentrate on it. Um, I, I was been running the first team since two thousand and seventeen, and there's so many bits extra that go along with Millwall, especially this year. We've had a very busy year with with media. Um, the Rainbow Laces was really really good in October. Sky had an interview with us. Um, I was happy to be invited on a panel for um, inclusion in football at the London Mayor's office um, and just explaining about what Mill will do, etc. Um, so it's nice to not worry about everything on a Sunday. Um, the downside of that is I, I do like the control and I think everyone's got their opinion on football. So uh, it's it, that, that side of it is a little bit more difficult, but I have to take my hat off to Rob Barr, the new manager. He's doing a phenomenal job. Um, He's experienced footballer, 43 years old, and uh, we're, we're playing really well, so the proof's in the pudding. Oh, you're going to have Ted playing for you yet, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I played like a 43-year-old when I was 21, actually. So <laughs> <laughs> so, I've always Ted you, mate. Hey, Hi, hey. Ted. Um, GFSN Cup semi-final coming up. It did well to defeat the Manchester side at the third attempt in as many years. Um, you're now going to face a side from Yorkshire, I believe, uh, in the semis. Um, what do you know about them? What are your chances of winning the trophy? Yeah, that was a really, really good um, a good day. We we took the minibus um, from the, from the trust um, to take it up there to, to play them. We played them in Milton Keynes, Manchester. We know they're a good side. I mean, they, they play phenomenal. Um, and we battled and battled in that game. It was such a good victory for us. Um, uh, winning on penalties is always a nice, uh, you know, a nice little touch on everything. So it was a really good day for everybody. Um, lots of uh, jumping around the changing rooms after. Yorkshire are a very, very strong side. I think Manchester would still have been the favourites, um, but Yorkshire are going to come down to us. They are going to bring a good side. Um, I, I, I do think this is our year. Um, we've set up slightly differently this year with the 3-5-2 formation, which was pretty much based on uh, the semi-final from, from earlier on this year, last season, uh, where... Uh, we just we just worked, didn't compete with Manchester at all, and we set up with this with Pack in the midfield, and that that was a real key to our victory, and that seems to be working for us this season. So yeah, I think our chances are really good. Um, hopefully, placing them in about February time, um, but yeah, fingers crossed. We're, we're 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 very confident this year. What about the other semi final, uh, Paul? Do you know who's in there? I mean, you you, you genuinely feel, regardless, obviously you've got. A, beat the Yorkshire outfit first but if you Indeed, get to the yeah. final it, 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 it could be yours there for the yeah, take yeah I mean it's, it's I think all the teams involved so the, the other final is Dublin versus Leicester in, in Dublin Dublin were the a finalist in the, the last season's uh, cup competition um, and happened to hold Manchester still on penalties uh, and, and, and when Manchester ended up beating them um, they are a good side I, I still think we would be confident um, I, I think Leicester going to Dublin, I can see Dublin taking that one. So I think it will be a Dublin final with whoever. What, in, us in Dublin, Paul? Uh, it will, I will, hopefully they'll come over to us uh, or come over to England or whoever, whoever. I don't want to be too confident about. We, we still need to beat Yorkshire. Um, but hopefully they'll, they would come over. The, 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 the final from last season was held in Dublin. So I think if they, if they are victorious with, um, with Leicester, I think they would come to England. I don't know, a good, a good win in Dublin, good night out to celebrate. I should it imagine, is just mate. true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that is the good side of it, yes, though. So. Without a doubt. Yeah, the, the Guinness is good there. There's no doubt yeah, about yeah, that. Absolutely. That's no. You, you've already won a trophy this year. I mean, you've got the potential of, 
of, of winning three, haven't you? We did, yeah. We uh, back in uh, October with Rainbow Laces, we were invited to a Leighton Orient tournament um, with. It was all with the supporters clubs. So a lot of supporters club, a lot of clubs have uh, LGBT supporters clubs attached to them. So West Ham had a team, uh, Crystal Palace had a team there, um, and we obviously took us uh, us as Millwall, and uh, no team could touch us at all. We managed to take the trophy, um, so we're one trophy up on the year so far. But we were definitely going for the treble this year. I surpass in the palace. And uh, the Hammers, how wonderful was that? Hey, eh? eh, that can't be bad, can it? Great news, Paul. But what is up next for the Mill Romans and Pride? Um, so we're on a break now till till after the uh, after New Year. Um, we the Romans team are playing on the eighth of January. We'll be away at Hackney Marshes against Phoenix. Phoenix generally have been a bit of a lower. Uh, lower end team they they've had some good results this season so we take every game seriously um so we'll be going out after christmas probably a lot fatter a lot uh very unfit um but we'll still be going for the for the victory and then the week after it's the it's the romans derby with uh, with pride so we're playing uh it's the first feet the seconds almost on the on the week after which will be which will be good fun it's a good good sort of club day um, and no doubt we'll uh, we'll all end up in the pub as well. That's good. <laughs> I think Jeff's here now. Yes. Can you hear me, everyone? We still can hear you, Jeff. Yes. Lovely. Well, Paul, one question I want to know is: um, now you're general manager, um, can you get in the team anymore? <laughs> Wow, that's rude, isn't it? <laughs> you think you think I was only staying manager just to get in the team? <laughs> I think there's a possibility. I've been there. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I've been in yeah. that one. You're, so you're not you're, you're not the only one, Jeff, as well that thinks that out of the team. Right. So are you still are you still captain? Uh, I'm not the captain. No, I've 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 relinquished that to um to Jay, uh, who's a far more experienced player than me and a much better player than me. Jay Lamoni is our striker. Absolutely. Um, at the moment, I've, I've just turned 40, um, which is a big, big step in uh, as a footballer. But um, uh, I, I, at the moment, I say I'm still holding my own as a back three. Um, I'm quite lucky. I've got two youngsters next to me who are very quick. Um, so they always say that they're, they're the legs for me. Um, so I'm the one that pulls the strings at the back, doesn't have to do too much running. Um, and just all those people around and I'm quite a big guy so I just get in the way of anything so touch wood at the moment yes I'm still getting in the team it's called experience Paul I- experience exactly yeah. yes and them youngsters <laughs> will learn one day don't worry about that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, it, it's interesting to hear how the season's going certainly one trophy under your belts but we'll all be keen to know the result of the Yorkshire game because uh there's nothing like being in another final. And if we're playing Dublin by some chance, it'll be an international uh, affair. So um, looking forward to hearing more about that when we next, sit, when we next hear from you, one of your, uh, one of your weekly reports. Absolutely, yeah. So that's, it's, it is good. It's such a nice, um, I think a cup competition just keeps everybody motivated. You know, the, the, you, the cup games are so energetic. Um, and playing in a final, it's a, it's a really lovely event um, you know, to go to a venue and and have that experience. So we, we will definitely be up for it. Uh, what, what position are you in the league now, Paul? How, how are you doing there? Yeah, we've, 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 we've won every game this season. Um, we've, I think we're five games down now and uh, we've won five out of five. We had a, well, a... Come on, pull your finger out. You need to be better than that. What's the matter with you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're, um, we had a very, very good victory at the weekend. Um, we, I think we were the only... The only team in London playing in the freezing cold uh, at, at midday on uh, on Sunday, um, but we hosted Charlton that um, that came up to play against us. Um, again, a lot of rivalry between us and Charlton as there always is. Uh, but again, a really really good game. We're um, they're a very very strong side. Winning at half time nil nil. We're playing quite well. Very difficult conditions, but I'm I'm delighted to say we ended the game at three one. Yeah. That's what we like to hear. To keep the record up. Well, done. Where, where was that being played, Paul? We played at St Paul's. Um, so you think... followed on. You followed on from the uh, Lionesses under eighteen team, didn't you? I think they kicked off at ten thirty. Uh, we uh, kicked off. Was, no, you. 
You were on Sunday, weren't you? Sunday, yeah, quarter past. Yeah, they, yeah they were that's on, it. Yeah, we they did were on Saturday. Yeah, they we were did on Saturday. catch a bit of that game. Funny enough, because we attended for the uh, the Santa Dash, the annual Santa Dash for the charity. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so we did manage to catch. I think it was Fulham. Uh, looks like a really good game. Um, it was. It was a hell of a game. But I my report will be on later. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, it was. Um, it looked like a really good game, and it was a good. It was a good day. The Santa Dash. It was. Uh, it was good to go down there and watch a bit of the um, the girls. It was good. Yeah, it was a shame Stan never made it, Paul. Oh, Stan, was you meant to be running in there? Stan was, yeah. Oh, what happened? Well, he turned up at the uh, Lions Centre and Sean was standing there and Stan walked in and he said, I've got your suit here, Stan. <laughs> and Stan said, what? So he said, your suit, your Santa suit. He said, what, what, what do I want that for? So he said, well, the last show that you were on with me, he said, you said you were going to uh, walk round. Oh, he said, I'm busy. Stan said, I'm busy. He said, but can I use the loo? Uh. So, uh, so that was it, really. And uh, there was this empty blue suit that never got round. But I'm sure he'll be up for it next year, I believe. Well, I mean, if they rename it next year, because it's the Santa Dash that puts me off. That yeah. dash, right? Is it that Dash? They say a Santa stroll. I might might join yeah. next year. We, we could do a dash in a stroll, but there was a good few good few of the Romans there, weren't there? Yeah, sixteen of us. Um, I think we we turned well up. With. It was good, and yeah. and you don't realise when you're running it how far the den is to St Paul's. I was I was <laughs> thinking it would it would have been a lot shorter run, but yeah, I I I, I agree with you, Stan. On this, it was it was a lot longer than I was expecting. Who, who's Stan? Who's Stan? You keep talking about Stan. It's Eamon. What's the matter with you? <laughs> well, I felt for I felt for old Dean Brown he, uh, pushing pushing Harvey around in yeah. a in a in, in a chair. <laughs> he looked he looked absolutely done for. But it's very close. St Paul's is very close to the den in a car, but <laughs> it seems a little bit long when you have to ha actually run it. I'm sure that's right. But yeah. uh, it's sort, yeah, sort of road seems to go on forever, doesn't it? It does. Well, forever, when, they change, <laughs> when they change it from the Millwall Stadium to the community centre, I don't know what I mean. Yeah, I thought you would be. Said that'd be good. <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to make sure Sean gets that information so yeah, that he can do yeah. he can do yeah. a vet a veterans stroll. That'd yeah, be it. That'd be Santa's good. dash and Santa's vets stroll. <laughs> that'd be the answer. That'd be the answer. Paul, thank you very much for joining us again. We do look forward to your continuing reports. And hopefully you'll join us again soon after you seal that victory to make the GFSN Cup final. So it's bye for now from me. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah. Cheers, Paul. And all, all the best, mate. And cheers from me, not Stan, but Eamon. <laughs> there you go. All I'm right. sure Stan says goodbye as well. Yeah. <laughs> they say, what's he talking about? Never mind. Set up, Paul. Brilliant. Thanks for your support, guys. Really appreciate it. Cheers, Paul. Cheers, man. Take care. Well, that was nice, old Paul Odin. Yeah, yeah, happy chap. It's all going the right way. Anyhow, we'll take a break there and hear what fantastic fanatics can do with a little bit of help from ourselves. And that's all of us. Hi, I'm Richard Gordon, and I'd like to invite you to become a fantastic fanatic. Fantastic Fanatics is a great way to raise funds for your sports club. Sign up today, find your club, and securely register your everyday debit and credit cards. Every time you spend with our retail partners, they pay a percentage back to your club. It costs you nothing, and you can win cash prizes along the way. Visit fantasticfanatics.com and help your club be the best it can be. I'm your host, Damon Barclay, and with me I have the No One Likes Us talking team of Bethany Warren, Ted Robinson and Jeff Burnage. With Christmas, well, only nine days away, why not spend on gifts through the Fantastic Fanatic site and give a bonus to the Mill Community Trust? It will help them deliver the very many activities that they do across all age groups in our community. Right, well, let's hear from Ellis Barr. Ellis here. Thank you for watching my videos. Now to hear what the middle line S's and Romans have been up to. 
and to hear who is next up for Gary Rowett and the Lions. Come on, Millwall. Yeah, come on, Millwall. Uh, Ellis, looking forward to Christmas, I hope. Keep us posted on what you're up to. And, uh, yeah, let's see a few more videos. Well, we've heard about the Millwall Romans and Pride already. So here is Jeff Burnage, where he updated on Millwall Lionesses for Maritime Radio. On Maritime Radio, it's back to you on Greenwich Breakfast. We can go back to Jeff Burnage now, reporting on Millwall action for the Lionesses at the weekend. Jeff? Well, on Sunday, Millwall's game with uh, Salt Dean was postponed until the new year, but they maintained their lead in the London and South East Regional Women's League, but now only on goal difference because Fulham won their game and they are one of the closest rivals in the promotion race. Uh, the next match is against Sutton United at Sutton's first team ground and that's at 12.30 on Sunday. In the meantime, the Kent Cup semi-final draw was done this week and one of the potential opponents was Gillingham who were our opponents in that in that amazing FA Cup game of two or three weeks ago. And sure enough, that's who we drew. The favourites for the Cup and holders, Gillingham, will be entertaining Millwall Lionesses on the 15th of January, possibly at Chatham United's ground, the Kent League side. The other two teams in the semi-final are Aylesford and Dartford. So that's one to look forward to. Although, on the evidence of the game against Gillingham a few, few weeks ago, our semi-final is going to be an absolute cracker. So that's one I want to look forward to and I'll be reporting on later. Meanwhile, the um, Lionesses wonderful under-18 side, under Ted Jones, they did play a game against Fulham, who are... Like Millwall, they are two of the best under-18 girls sides around in London. And I think we inflicted uh, Fulham's only defeat this season in a very good game over at uh, Kingston earlier in the season. This time Fulham came and managed to get a 1-1 draw against the Lionesses. In fact, they led until quite late when debutant Ruby Snowden, who's come up from the under-16s, scored the equaliser. So that ended 1-1. They had their own cup draw to look forward to. They play in the, the Capital Cup. They've drawn AFC Leighton again on the uh, weekend of the 14th, 15th of January, po possibly the Saturday. And that game will take place at to the old Walthamstow Avenue ground, if uh, some of our older listeners recall where that is. So that's my report for this week. Next week, as we said, it's Sutton, and I'll be reporting on that in due course. Thanks very much, Jeff. And uh, all that Millwall action from the Millwall Lioness is coming your way very soon. Right now, it's time for the Maritime Radio Pick of the Week. Well, that was great. You're always there on uh, Maritime, Jeff. Sadly, the Lionesses game at Sutton United, which was due to take place, as we know, at Grander Green Lane, uh, that's now been called off due to the bad weather and will have to be rearranged in the new year because that was the last weekend of fixtures until January the 8th. Thanks, Jeff. Is it a couple of points? That was Ruby Windsor, I believe, not it Snow. It was. Look, when you're doing it, Right after a game, Eamon, uh, off the cuff, without notes. Come on, I'm entitled to the odd mistake. And that was, of course, yeah. Ruby Windsor. Yeah. We did used to have a player called Ruby Snowden a couple of years ago. That's what I must have been, uh, my mind must have been uh, wandering back I to th that. I, th I thought you got mixed up between <coughs> the Windsors and Snowdens with Princess Margaret and her husband. That's what I thought. But never mind. Yes. Good on you, Ruby Windsor, for giving us a little prompt in the week about that one. We picked it up. So keep those goals coming. That's wonderful. Ted, you got any questions uh, about... Oh, the... no, I, I mean, I'd just like to say to Jeff, I mean, Jeff watches the Lionesses, and uh, but you must be really infused. I mean, you've always been enthusiastic about them, uh, Jeff, but they're going really in the right direction. And looking at this under-18 side that's coming up, I think the next five years look wonderful for the Lionesses. That's really good. Um it seems that the quality coming through from the Lionesses Academy is really good for the future, which is great. Um, well, I agree with that. I think a lot of uh, credit has to go to uh, Sean Daly and the Millwall Community Trust, who are 
effectively running the lionesses now um and um yeah we we only restarted an under 18 team last season and um brought in ted ted jones this season uh yeah they're doing really well um but that's not to say they've won every game it's quite a tough league and um we did lose to the unbeaten league leaders ascot the other week that was only one nil but the first team um you know that defeat by gillingham in the fa cup that knocked us back a little bit we haven't looked quite the same since it was um it was everybody was dying to to win that game really dying to win that game and uh losing in the very very sad way we did in the last seconds of extra time and then um on penalty shootout when we had the chance to win the tie with the 10th penalty only to lose it on the 12th uh, it was heartbreaking but having said that promotion's the aim we're still top um we've got some harder games to come in the second half of the season but yeah i just wish more Millwall fans would decide uh, to come and watch the team and that's why i keep reporting on them so hopefully we'll see a bit more late in the new year yeah I think that the Lionesses and the whole academy stream there produces the goods because I, I think they're heading towards the National League and that'll be brilliant. Well, it feels like our transfer window has already opened with the arrival of Adomo Imaku, who completed his move from Shamrock Rovers to Millwall on Thursday. And the Ireland under a striker requested the number 22 jersey at the Den and got it. He's not eligible to play until January. The 19-year-old only completed his leaving certificate at Moyle Park College in Dublin suburb this summer before opening himself up to the prospect of a move abroad. He joined Shamrock Rovers in 2020 and moved up to the first team last year when he made his debut in May 21. And he did that against Derry City. He scored goals in all three European competitions, Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League. That's quite something when you think about it. Across two continental campaigns. Any early thoughts? How about you, Ted? You got any early thoughts on this one? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, fantastic that we've managed to get Edomo in because, uh, you know, We've done it before the transfer window even opens, which is really good in my eyes. It gives us uh, the, the lad a, a bit of time to, to bed in. Although he can't play, he can certainly train with us. Um, so that bodes well. But it's also a young lad with a lot of potential that we've signed. I do believe one or two Premier Clubs were looking at him. So it, it's an exciting development for Millwall. And listen, we've all been critical in the past of transfer windows and uh, you know but I think this is the sort of thing that helps Millwall as a football club to move forward because if this this boy turns out to be as good as his potential says he could be um, we still got to see it obviously but if he if he does then you know we're on the, the, the lines of what Brentford have been doing for the last few years where they brought young talent in and sold it on a massive prof- profit I mean I don't want to see anybody go but if the boy is as good as I think he could be from what I've seen and heard about him then we could be in a position where that may be an option for us if you know what I mean but uh, let's see him getting into the first team first let's ho- hopefully see him come in and straight away pick up in championship football because it's no mean ask. we might have scored in European games and, and whatever that but the championship is a difficult league for, for most people but he's 19 he's fresh he should give us a bit of pace about him you know uh, we've all been looking forward to a little bit extra up front you know to to um, you know give us a little bit of pace up there I think is what we need more than anything but I, I'm looking forward to knowing to see if he can manage to break into the uh, first team. Yeah, yeah. Jeff? As things stand, we're a little bit light up front with uh, injuries to uh, Benekophobi, among other things. Um, uh, whether he goes into the first team squad straight away, I don't think he's clear yet. He may start off in the under-21s. Um, in that friendly we had during lockdown, we played Bromby and 
as substitutes, we had um, uh, Isaac Olafe, uh, who scored goals in League Two for Sutton. And he's only about 20, I think, maybe 21. Abdul Malik came on in that game as well. He's a striker. Um, so it may be that they intend to put him in the under-21s to start with, uh, particularly if we sign a first-team level striker in January, or perhaps if Benekafobi comes back and proves he's fully fit. Uh, but um, having said that, this is potentially a coup for our scouting system. Um, they have been apparently interested in this lad for a year, nearly a year, and he knew he would have signed last summer, but for the fact he needed to finish his um, his leaving certificate. And also, am I right in thinking, Eamon, that the Republic of Ireland season is a summer season? It uh, is, running. principally, yeah. And that's why he's joined us now, because Shamrock Rovers' season has just finished. Yeah. Um, so that's what made him available now. Um, he has been training with the team. We've seen that on the club's website. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is exciting, and um, um, I, I can't wait to see what he's like. It, it's a replacement, hopefully, for the sad loss of Zach Lovelace uh, in the summer, who went to Rangers, uh, who was in the first team in January, if you remember, coming on as a sub on four or five occasions. That's right. That may prove to be a really big loss in time, but you never quite know what a 16-year-old is going to be like when they're 20. You just don't know all the time. So, um, But I'm very pleased with the signing and um, we'll see how that goes. I've got a feeling we'll see him on the bench. I've looked at a lot of stuff of him playing and he's certainly got a lot of confidence going. Well, I'll go from what Gary Rowett said about uh, the weekend and I, I sort of tend to agree with him. He had, he had a lack of options on the bench in forward positions. To- yeah. Thank you. So, um, and I think all the, all our youngsters that we have, you know, I think if they, they thought they was ready, they would have perhaps had them on the bench on Saturday, you know, yeah. after Malik or uh, Alafi. I'm not 100 percent sure what's happening with Alafi. I'm, I'm not. I would not The way things are going for the boy, I, I won't be at all surprised if he either gets loaned out again or um, maybe even moved on. But, I think it. I think it's been out in either the South London Press or Southwark News that. It's likely that Alefi will go out in January. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't surprise me, Eamon, I mean, because you know every footballer needs to be playing, uh, uh, playing regularly. Not only that, but playing to the standard that they should they believe that they can play at. You know? Yeah. So I wouldn't. Be, I'm with you in a sense. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Fingers crossed, everything goes well for the lad and that, and we might see him appearing on the bench a bit like uh, as Jeff was mentioning, Zach Lovelace. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's great to see that we're signing a striker. Um, me and my dad were actually chatting about it last night. Um, that, you know, I think we called him, I think my dad calls him Tom Bandage because Tom Bradshaw always seems to be injured. So hopefully we have got a great backup. But um, maybe he is going to be that player that we have on the bench and then he can develop his talent from there. Maybe just coming on in the last couple of minutes just to build his game a little bit and then... And then we'll see. But it would be nice to... Obviously, we do have some great strikers. Fingers crossed for no more injuries. So, yeah, hopefully we can see more from them and then have him coming after. I know the the Aircom League is probably not quite the championship. More likely something around about League One-ish. But, you know, Shamrock Rovers have been the top side there for quite some time. And he's been amongst it and got out on the pitch and he's playing, was playing for him. So we'll have to see. So let's be hopeful, as they say. Sunday's game at Luton was called off today. So there's no game ahead now until we play Bristol City on the 29th. And uh, next week's show, we'll take a look at that game and the game at Watford. As next week's show is the final show of the year. But you might like to tell us about another game that's coming up. Well, there's another game to talk about this coming week, um, uh, which is the FA Youth Cup tie against Arsenal. Yeah. Um, uh, People might remember we drew Chelsea three years ago when they were the best 
under 18 team in the country. Um, went over to Stamford Bridge and gave a great account of ourselves, losing only 1 0 to the eventual winners. That lad, Brojar, the Albanian that's just got injured, has played in Chelsea's first team. He scored that winner. We had Hayden Muller, we had Alex Mitchell, we had Abdul Malik all playing. I think there's another couple as well, uh, possibly on the bench. But once again, we've drawn one of the very hardest draws in the third round, which is where we come in. And it's Arsenal away, and they play their Youth Cup games um, at Boreham Wood FC. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's now, it was originally going to be the weekend, um, but they're now playing that on Monday evening at 7 p.m. And I'm pretty sure that admission is free. Um, so I don't know how many Millwall fans are expecting, but I will certainly be there looking forward to that. I don't like missing a, an FA Youth Cup tie. I've uh, been going for many years since we yeah. actually won it a couple of times with me happily watching on. So it's a severe test for our youth team. Very severe, um, but I think they're going to give a good account of themselves under Larry McAvoy, who's been involved with the Millwall Youth Policy for as long as I can remember, and joint manager Chris Perry, the former Wimbledon defender. Yeah, should be very good. And it is free, Jeff. Uh, there's no charge. Um, if you want to get down to WD6, um, it's going to cost you nothing. Um, other than the journey to Boreham Wood, where we've had success before in other games. One of the players to look for will be Romain Essie, who a number of our fans saw play in the friendly against Bronby in the first half, and people were very impressed with him. He's only an under-16. He's a schoolboy still. Um, so um, he he's very young. I think, I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, he's very young. Um, be a big, be a big evening for him. Um, I can't wait, and it's going to be something I'm definitely going to find time to do on Monday evening. Well, By which time, of course, the big freeze will hopefully be over, and presumably, I mean, that's why they've put the game back. It would still have been very, very cold on Saturday, even at two p.m. Um, yeah. Putting it back to Monday evening when the weather will have changed. Apparently, very sensible. So it says, basking in 14 degrees, apparently. It will be wonderful again, won't it? I thought it, it was Boreham Wood, not Barbados, we were playing. Uh, you're correct. But thanks for that. That's brilliant, Jeff. I'll be there, and I'll give you a report on what happens. Lovely. Thank you. But anyway, yeah, Boreham Wood. And, uh, yeah, get up there. Well, we'll have, it'll be busy. It will be busy. It will be busy. Jeff will be reporting at Maritime on... The game from Boreham Wood. He'll be reporting on Maritime for the Lionesses at Gander Green Lane. And at he'll be re- at three, three o'clock. o'clock. Yeah, yeah, three o'clock. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And he'll always remember your name, Ruby Windsor. So there you go. That won't be too bad in the future, will it? Anyhow, that's sorry, very good. Sorry, Ruby. Uh, your yeah. big day. Yeah. Debut for the under 18s, a debut goal on equal. Was it the under 18s? Was it the yeah. under 18s? Okay. Under 18s. Yeah, she is okay. a young one. Yeah. She's a young one. Yeah. She could still play in the under 16 team, which is where yeah. she's been playing, but that's, that's the nice. under 18 team. Okay, then. That's good. That's good news. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a break there and listen to Bethany Warren talking about how not to sneeze or cough into the microphone, <laughs> but donate or sponsor to the Millwall Community Trust. Uh, Yeah, that'll be a better thing to listen to, I'm sure. The work of the Millwall Community Trust makes a big difference for people in Lewisham, Southwark and North Kent. Times are getting tougher, and to help them make a difference, you can help too, by making a donation. Give a one-off donation, or a monthly amount. Your support is crucial in raising vital funds for their work or by fundraising for them. If you are running, swimming, cycling, cooking, dancing, parachuting or anything else, why not do it for the Millwall Community Trust? Interested? Then either email inquiries at millwallcommunity.org.uk or phone 0207 740 0503. I'll say that again. Email inquiries at millwallcommunity.org.uk or phone 0207 740 
0303. Thanks if you can. I'm your host, Damon Barclay, and with me I have the no one likes us talking team of Bethany Warren, Ted Robinson, and Jeff Burnage. By supporting the McMillwall Community Trust, you can help people of all ages to get the best opportunities as individuals and collectively as members of the wider community. Well, we're all looking forward to the next game. Well, in fact, a few next games, actually. Uh, but in the meantime, here are a few matters of interest for Millwall fans. First off, while there are many ways you can help out, perhaps the simplest is donating a winter coat. If you have a big, bulky coat just taking up space in the back of your wardrobe, stuffed in the cupboard or under the bed, it could make a potentially life-saving difference to someone in need in these cold conditions. Please drop off your coat to Mule Community Trust Lions Centre if you wish to donate. Next week, Gary Staff will host Pat, Stan and George. There will be a review of our game at Luton and a couple of guests too. Don't miss the last show of 2022. Additionally, the Lions Food Hub have their Christmas fundraiser back again. Everyone is welcome from 10am to 3pm on Friday the 23rd of December. They can't wait to see you all. We will also have a tombola, raffles and Christmas music. Biscuits, cakes, tea and coffee are all available. All are welcome, so please come along and help support our local community. You heard from our sponsored Lionesses, Jade Keogh and Grace Seely, at the beginning of the show. Uh, and m many of the Lionesses have found sponsors for this season. But why not sponsor a Lionesses kit like us to help them get back to where they belong in the National League? If you're an organisation, you can get fantastic exposure opportunities for your business. Like, for example, Victory Goalkeeper Gloves, Andy Rothery, Impetus Women's Football, Megan, Jay and Lola Baxter, all of whom have sponsored a player. And as mentioned, ourselves with Jade and Grace. On top of seeing your name on the club website, you'll be able to enjoy a range of benefits, including a signed shirt. You get to meet your sponsored player. Uh, three invitations to a VIP sponsor day, a free season ticket to all home games, a presentation photo. This kit sponsorship is priced at £160 plus VAT. You can do this as a company, an individual or a group of you. To purchase, get in touch with the Lionesses by emailing the great Kelly Webster, who is on kwebster, K-W-E-B-S-T-E-R, at millwallcommunity.org.uk. I'll say that again, Kay Webster at millwallcommunity.org.uk and she will deal with it. Wonderful. Don't forget you'll be able to listen to the No One Likes Us Talking Team bring reports from our games both home and away for both the Lions, the under-18s and Lionesses and also updates on Millwall Community Matters 2 on Maritime Radio Broadcasting on 96.5 FM. Additionally, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, social media sites and all popular podcast sites. Well, that's good night from me. Thanks and good night from Bethany. Good night. Thanks and good night, Ted. Good night, Eamon. Good night, all. And thanks and good night, Jeff. Good night, everybody. Looking forward to talking to you all again soon. Let's not forget it to keep it safe on the streets out there. <laughs>